In this video, let's learn about mucosal and also ranula. Mucus is a secretory product that is produced by a minor salivary gland and mucus is the most prominent product of sublingual gland. The mechanism of mucus cavity development is by extravasation of the mucus or retention of mucus. Mucous heals are mostly caused due to irritation fibroma and are most common type of benign soft tissue masses in the oral cavity. Muco meaning mucus and seal meaning cavity. When the mucous heals are present in the floor of oral cavity, they are called as ranula. So when the mucus is extravasated, that means the leakage of fluid from the ducts of SNE or into the surrounding tissue. Extra meaning outside and vasa meaning the vessel. So in cases of extravasation and retention, these mucoceles or ranulas are formed. Coming to retention, here there is a narrow ductal opening that cannot adequately accommodate the exit of saliva produced. And that leads to ductal dilatation and it causes surface swelling. It is a less common phenomena than extravasation. See in mucoceal, it consists of a circumscribed cavity in the connective tissue and the submucosa that produces elevation in the mucosa. The majority of the mucoceles results from extravasation of the fluid into the surrounding tissue most commonly after a traumatic break in the continuity of the ducts. This mucoceal lacks a true epithelial lining, ranula. It is a term used for mucoceles that occurs in the floor of the oral cavity. See in this image, the tongue is elevated and this is the swelling that is ranula. The name is derived from the word rana means this swelling resembles the translucent underbelly of the frog. So the name ranula. Ranulas can be congenital, acquired or they may be found in newborn infants. The main etiology of the ranula is due to obstruction of one of the salivary glands. This ranula is essentially a retention cyst that is there is retention of saliva there or it can be caused due to spontaneous or results from surgery to the floor of the mouth especially during the submandibular duct relocation or in cases of extravasation cyst that arise from gland of no or bladin occasionally due to submandibular gland and initially if there is a blockage of duct that causes retention cyst and with increase in pressure, it leads to rupture of the SNI that further leads to extravasation cyst. Ranulas are smooth cystic swellings under the tongue which are usually seen on one side. These ranulas are presented as blue dome shaped swellings in the floor of the mouth or they can also be transparent with overlying blood vessels. Usually, ranulas tend to be larger than mucoceles and they can also fill the floor of mouth and huge ranulas can also elevate the tongue. As we already said, ranulas are usually unilateral. So these are usually not included in the midline swellings of the body. So the ranula is located lateral to the midline that helps to distinguish from a midline dermoid cyst. If ranula is larger in size, they can affect both breathing and also swallowing because obstruction of mouth with tongue can also result in sleep apnea or difficulty in swallowing. So this is a case of cervical ranula or a plunging ranula. Plunging or cervical ranulas occurs when spilled mucin dissects through the mylohyoid muscle and it produces a swelling in the neck. The extravasation of mucus occurs behind the floor of the mouth through the mylohyoid muscle into the upper neck region or the submental region. This swelling is soft, cross-fluctuant, non-tender dumbbell shaped swelling in the submandibular region and in examination it is bidigitally palpated that means with two fingers in case of plunging ranulas the swelling in the floor of mouth may or may not be visible and due to the large neck swelling it may be difficult to distinguish between the cystic hygroma and the plunging ranula it can be easily diagnosed by mri cystic hygroma has a simple epithelial lining whereas the ranula contains loose connective tissue. So this is the differential diagnosis to differentiate between the cystic hygroma and the ranula. Coming to the treatment. The mucoceles in the lip or the buccal mucosa are treated by excision with straight removal of any projecting peripheral salivary glands and during the process we should avoid the injury to other glands during the own closure. Simple aspiration or drainage results in high recurrence. So both the simple and plunging ranulas 
needs excision of the cyst wall and also the sublingual gland. During the surgery, caution must be taken to preserve the lingual nerve. Sometimes the plunging ranula may need cervical incision. So this is all about mucoceles and ranulas. If you like this video, do subscribe to my channel.